Quick disclaimer, uh, these videos are meant for educational purposes only. Anything said or shown in any of these videos are personal opinion and my perspective. Trading carries a high level of risk, so anything done is your responsibility. <laughs> Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to MentFX and today we are going to be talking about fractility in the markets and why it really doesn't matter what kind of trader you want to be in terms of time frames, in terms of higher time from traders or lower time from traders, someone that wants to be on the charts very minimalistically and look at higher time frame zones or someone that wants to be constantly in the action looking at much lower time frames, potentially doing it very full time and enjoy being in front of the computer screen and knowing very quickly whether they're wrong or right. So as a lot of you know, and I've been talking about this for um, for over the last few videos, this was my basic week on UJ. I've been just kind of trading UJ during Asian session because it lines up with my overall um, schedule, especially since use during the day. Oftentimes I'm doing other things, looking after my dog. I'm either working with people on the mentorship or working on the fun. Okay, how's it going guys? Welcome back. Oh my God, my mic is loud as shit. Hey, how's it going guys? Hopefully it's not too loud. Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to Ment FX. And um, as you all know, in the last video, we did a very deep dive into the fractility and the, and the nature of the three box strategy. If you haven't seen that yet, check out the first video on three box strategy, the videos after for the psychological element of them, the video after that, which is the lower time frame aspect of them, the video after that, which is the lower time frame and the fractal aspect of them. And now the higher time frame aspect of it, taking into account all the other fractal understanding, right? And the psychological understanding that you should have going into this. And the main points that you should probably have on your mind, especially if you're thinking about utilizing this three box strategy, and this is true about any strategy, but more so about this three box strategy is that Yes, we are looking for the same thing across every single time frame, And it's a beautiful setup because it happens 24 seven. It's happened for the last 100, 200 years. It's the reason Wyckoff exists. It's the reason this idea of an accumulation cycle, distribution cycle, markup cycle, accumulation distribution, et cetera, exists. It's the reason that Elliott wave and stuff like this right here works. It's the reason that Dow in the form of higher highs, higher lows, and all this other fun stuff works, right? It's a combination of all things put into a very, very simple and easy to follow strategy. Now, just because it's simple and easy to follow does not mean the emotional element of it and the psychological element will not impede on your understanding, which is why, as always, I suggest that you constantly are testing, back testing, taking journaled notes of the things you're looking at and seeing how they correspond and work in the actual live markets, because you're going to notice that Although the setup is very good and you're gonna be able to see the setup in many areas. And if you go to any chart, right? So let's get rid of this. You go to any chart to any time frame, right? Let's pick a number between one and 10. Let's go with six and count the six, ready? So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of 15 minutes. So let's add like four more to it. Um, one, two, three. Four. Okay, so a three hour chart, right? So I, I've never looked at the three hour chart. You can think I have, maybe I, I predicted this, but it doesn't really matter because it's all hindsight anyway, so we can see it. But what you'll do is if you jump onto any time frame and just try to view this three box strategy from a, from a standpoint of where could I have gotten involved, right? And then follow along. Well, you're going to see a few areas, right? You have a break of structure right here, right? So you have your first blue POI, look to get involved. You have an SND zone right here. Whoops, make it that red. And you have an area to go short from inside of that, right? So we know that inside of here is going to be a great play to go short and that one worked and it's perfect. The next one, you have an impulse down, right? Impulse down, you have a red POI right here or, you know, we're gonna keep it simple, last up move, so this one right here, we're not gonna do any refinements, none of that crazy stuff right now. If you want to know how to do that, check out my previous videos or if you wanna get in depth onto how to refine and understand that things, those things in depth, especially with structured and tailored content, check out the mentorship as it's one of the best um, and most active communities in the entire industry. Not biased at all. Now, you have this point here, and this is a great example of that first step that I told you to worry about and be wary about. You're not always gonna get those mitigations that come into those zones. A lot of smart money wants to make you believe that you can be part of every single move, know what, what everything's gonna happen, know exactly where it's heading. The truth about most smart money, especially for me, maybe it's different for other people that, that are teaching smart money, is that I never really know exactly where it's going to go. I know based on a certain time frame and based on a certain analysis and a certain simple three box setup where my invalidation points are for a trade and where I want to target. And even after that target, where my higher time frame targets might exist, right? So for instance, even though I might want to look to get involved on the cell inside of here, right? And overall look to target that cell into this area here. I also know that because of the rule of fractility, 
there are going to be higher time frame plays. So let's go like this, just like that. Let's go to a daily chart. I also know there's going to be higher time frame plays that are in motion that may deliver to other points of liquidity. How so? Well, we know that there's also, in this case, a break of structure that happened right here, right? And this whole impulse up here is its own higher time frame impulse that now has its own SND zone created by this point here, which means you can have a bias preset that if price is to come into here and give you some kind of accumulation, oops, prices to come into here and give you some kind of accumulation, there's a good chance that you can expect prices to keep going to liquidity highs, right? But that also means that we have this point of mitigation to come and take and potentially come and go even lower. How so? Well, if we go even to a higher time frame and work with what is given to us, well, we also know that there is a higher time frame impulse here, right? And we know that that impulse is created by what? So again, blue POI, we have that impulse created by a red POI here. Right, and we have that red POI also supported by this POI right here, which means really, if price is to tap into here or here, we can expect it if it distributes to come into this liquidity here and potentially higher time frame liquidity here, which allows for us to take, for instance, right, we're on a three hour, right? So we're on a three hour. So for instance, now, as you can see, that fractal setup within that higher time frame setup is going to allow for us to have targets that not are only at these liquidity lows, but are also targeting, for instance, this area that may put in bullish price action. And in the case that it doesn't, we can continue to hold because we'll be at break even into where the lower time frame distributions and targets in these areas here. And where else? Well, if you keep on playing with time frames and you understand this way of thinking, you're also going to be able to do stuff like this where you go, oh, we have a blue impulse to the top side. Okay. We have a red demand zone. And what are we going to look for? A green three box setup setup, which means that if we are to take cells, especially from up in here on lower time from impulses, there's a there's a reason to hold those cells, especially if it's worth it for you and swaps do not affect you too badly. And by the way, swaps really are like cheap as shit, um, especially if you're trading very large so you can hold a position that may run from that one three hour setup all the way down to here. And you don't know if it is or it isn't. That is the beauty of smart money. Now, I'm, I'm going to admit it. I have no idea if a market's going long or short, but you can see that I have a very good understanding about if I am to position myself into a trade, where my overall targets are going to be, where my points of invalidation are going to be, where I'm going to look for potential counter trend trades, right? But also in the case that those counter trend trades do not work out or fail, where I'm going to have my overall entry potentially targeted to from a standpoint of large time frame areas. And that similar three hour area has a one to 117 if it wants to run. And notice how this right here is a higher time frame approach. We aren't looking at anything under the three hour time frame, and still you are able to find the RRs that are absurd, especially for the retail community. Absolutely absurd. Why are they absurd? Because we are looking to enter on a basis of fractality, right? And we're thinking in terms of scalability. If you're entering the one minute time frame, you're going to be stopped out a lot back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But when you get yourself positioned, you can counter, you can trade to those higher time frame areas, which might be a four hour time frame. And that four hour trade can create for you a large one to a hundred or R kind of trade, especially with, well, with partials throughout. Similarly, if you're someone that doesn't want to spend as much time as me, for instance, on the charts, or you're not doing that as, as much, or you have other hobbies, or you have a job currently, and you're just trying to get into this understanding, and you've been back testing, and you want to forward test, but you want to do it on live market conditions, as you go to the higher time frames, you can set up these same setups with the same beautiful three box methodology across back and forth and back and forth with targets planned out that you are going to look to target and look to get yourself out of and those same targets because now since we're on a three hour that daily or that weekly or that monthly target is going to create that same one to 100. the only difference between people that scalp on lower time frames and people that are on higher time frames is the time difference that it takes to grow an account in some cases or to hit those trades right someone on the lower time frame is going to hit a lot more trades but also has to do a lot more sitting in front of the screen a lot more managing and a lot more um, getting taken out, getting back in, take, getting taken out, getting back in. Someone on the higher time frames may have still charts that run away from them without giving them an, an opportunity to get involved. But when they get involved, are going to have the same thing. 
But now that one to a hundred is not going to take you one week. It's probably going to take you, you know, a few weeks or a few months. That is how you have to think about the market in terms of higher time from training, but it applies the exact same way. Notice how we're viewing these impulses. And this is all with the, with the content taught on this channel, right? This is the same thing that we've taught in terms of like the golden goose style type of trading. If you haven't seen that, go watch it. It's called strategy revealed the next move, something like that. There's a golden egg, beautiful golden goose strategy. Check it out. And it's the idea of zooming out to understand where you are in a move or going to a higher time frame to understand where you are in an overall move so that you can pinpoint where your overall targets might be. But again, remember, just because we have this target doesn't mean it's gonna be reached, right? Just because we have this target doesn't mean that we're gonna get all the way here, which is why when we get involved, we have partial points in terms of other liquidity. And it's not hard to spot liquidity. Liquidity is any swing high or swing low in the market. And the way you view which liquidity you wanna run is based on the move that you're in. Below every swing point on the downside are going to be sell stops. Those are gonna be sell stops that are gonna be, that are gonna to wanna to be ran by smart money. Those are footprints. And also there's gonna be demand zones in the form of left behind inefficiencies on lower time frames, And those points are gonna be wanna be fulfilled. That is why you see stuff like this occur. And that is why now we're in this area or so, and we could be continuing to reach down a little bit deeper to fulfill some more of those zones, right? And again, if we were on that three hour play that we're looking at here, this is the beauty of something like this, where this small three hour impulse and this entry right here could create this kind of run for you, right? Let's continue. So that could have been that first run. And now notice the second run never got back to that demand zone. That happens. That fucking happens. Don't think that you're going to get entries every single time there's an impulse. There's not always going to be a pullback. This is also a, tr a problem a lot of Fibonacci traders make. Now I don't trade Fibonacci. I don't, I don't need to do that. SND zones in terms of, in terms of moves are much, much better and much more probabilistic, especially if you have a good understanding of how inefficiencies are created and how to trade to them. And especially if you have a good understanding of how to find and pinpoint the right SND zones, which is something I teach on this channel and teach in depth in the mentorship link right there down below. So check it out if you want to. So no mitigation, but again, what do you have next? You have a new move to the downside in the form of a new, I'm gonna just keep the, the, the green box on, I'm not gonna keep changing the colors, it's too much, but you have a new impulse, SND, entry, which again, as you take it, are looking to target this low, but are also looking to target the higher time frame zones set forth by those higher time frame fractal blue box setups with overall targets exceeding and coming into those higher time frame three box setups. This is how you create ideas about where price may head, how it may head there, and what liquidity you might have to take to get to those areas. And that's how you position yourself over time, whether you're on high time frames or low time frames, and look to target long term, right? This is something that a lot of people don't talk about. I talk about it all the time. I, MentFX, yours, yours truly, do not know where price is going to go. I don't know right now if EU is going to come down here or if it's ready to go long. But all I know is that the cells that I have positioned from up here are being held with partials already taken into these lows. And buys that I like to position myself into in zones like this that have taken a minus one have been fully taken care of by the fact that we're positioned in cells, right? Or as those buys broke down, the new cells available to you as the new structure um, continues to break down to the downside are going to give you new runs that are going to, again, provide for you the same targets that you have on the higher time frame. This is what a top-down approach looks like. And I'll have a video done on top-down approaches using the three box methodology for you guys on this channel in the next video, probably. So we'll, we'll look to do that for you guys. So again, just looking at that three hour. Now notice you can look at this on any time frame. I showed you in the last video, you can do it with just lower time frames, 15 minutes, stuff like that. I've shown you in the very first video on my blue box setup that you can do this, right? But again, setup right there, it works out, gives you an entry and you go. Again, what do you have here? Impulse down, SND zone, Y call setup, down we go. Impulse, zone, no Y call setup, doesn't get here, keeps going. Impulse, Y call zone, no setup, it keeps going. Impulse, zone, Wyckoff, go. Another example of where prices are going to run without you, not give you the mitigations you're looking for, and keep going. When this happens, this is how the composite man or institutions get people that are emotionally unstable or psychologically blind or psychologically inept. Okay, not inept, that's a rude word, but psychologically 
um, not on top of their shit because they haven't actually tested their strategy to start to, di to to start to diverge from their strategy, start looking at lower stuff, higher stuff, just trying to force stuff, start trying to get in, and that's where people start getting stopped out, over leveraging, starting to lose their accounts, even though they should technically be either break even, right, because there's no trades, or waiting for the next trade, because it will present itself. Because if you've tested this and seen it happen back to back to back, there's always an opportunity. Now again, notice this, you have again another so we get below here, we have an impulse, SND, Wyckoff setup, very small one, works the same way with the three hour. Impulse, SND, nothing, okay? Impulse, SND, failure, okay? This is where people, again, go into the comments and, and start, you know, lambastering me or other smart money people without testing something, without noticing that this, this right here is how you make money and you position yourself in these with just with not just one target You position yourself with long-term targets and you don't just trail to every single high because what do we know about highs and lows? They are liquidity points and we don't know when a liquidity grab wants to occur, right? We don't know if price is gonna come down here and then make this liquidity grab above this and then go short We don't know if it wants to take a liquidity grab above this and then go short or if it just wants to go here and go short all we can do is we can suppose and create assumptions about how inefficiency is gonna be fulfilled, how s and zones are gonna be tapped into in an overall bias from a point of invalidation and a point of target, what our higher time frames are saying in terms of where we can target long-term and look to position ourselves in a way that's going to allow us to trade to those zones. That is how you do it. And if you can do it and you can do it well and you've tested it and you're sure of yourself, go get funded with Man Funding because we are more than excited to have the best and highest level of traders on with us. That's the link in the top. And again, if you want to get educated and understand how to do this on a much better level, especially surrounded with some of the best people in the community, check out the mentorship link below. Thank you very much. Now, we can continue doing this and you can clearly see that it works. And in other areas, you're going to see where price finally shifts and doesn't give you setups and you can begin to look to position yourself long. But again, notice there's not always going to be moves that come back into zones. There's not always going to be moves that come back into zones. Well, actually here it happened, right? Perfect and you have that run on liquidity before it gets taken out. Again, a perfect example of the three box setup working within some kind of trend, delivering to you the liquidity you needed, giving you the setup you needed to go. And all it would have taken from you is to be psychologically and emotionally stable during the times where not the best setups present themselves. And again, I have this constant question uh, that people ask me, not, not my own question, but people that ask me is, how do I know which SD zones will hold? And you know, are, are higher time frame ones better than lower time frames? No, neither. Work the exact same way. Notice how there are prolonged periods of exhaustion or prolonged periods of nothing being tapped into. If you really want to think about this, this whole area here is area of failure until this first setup. So that means it took from this point here, 28 days. If you were someone that followed the higher time frames, it took 30 days of you sitting there, either taking nothing, not being able to get in or even taking a few losses before you saw the next trade that actually ran. That's 30 days. Now, the difference is on a one minute chart. So this is again, let's go back to what I was doing this week on a one minute chart. Those same periods that would have been 30 days, for instance, like this right here. Right. So there was no setup that I could find here. Actually, this is perfect. So start of the session happened here for me. There was no setup I could find until right here, which took what? Five hours. OK. On a higher time frame, that five hours of taking losses, drawdowns, break evens is going to be five weeks or five months if you're on a much, much higher time frame, or five days if you're on a, let's say, a 30 minute or a one hour chart. The only difference between zones and structural moves across time frames is only in the fact that it's going to take longer to either wait for setups or shorter. And it's going to, again, play into your emotions if you aren't able to understand that there are going to be guaranteed periods of nothing happening. And you can see that by going to any one minute chart, just like this, and testing it. There's gonna be prolonged periods of nothing happening into trades, of nothing happening into trades, right? If you had to see this, so this right here, 11 hours. On a higher time frame, on a one hour chart, that's not 11 hours, that's, let's say, 11 days or on a daily chart, this right here could be 11 weeks, right? You have to understand that as you work your way up in structure and time frames and order flow, there are going to be more times of nothing happening. But at the end of the day, the setups presented to you are the exact same. And as long as you look to position yourself the way I teach you to position yourself and then look to, to target 
areas that are based on higher time from liquidity and are based on the idea of smart money running sell side and buy side liquidity in the form of sell stops and buy stops, you're going to be able to position yourself some moves that actually make movements to certain points. That's why a lot of a lot of smart money is able to just call a low or a high and say, oh, I'm gonna, it's going to run to this high. And then it runs and they go, told you, but it doesn't help you if you don't know how to position yourself, right? A lot of smart money likes to just tell you it's going to run to that high. And yeah, it is. Sure. Because liquidity exists there. We understand that. That's that's easy. But how do you position yourself in that move? Well, you use that three box setup that I've taught you guys here. Um, or you go deeper with the mentorship and you learn all the extra entry criteria and way we think like MBs, fractalized double MBs, uh, triple Ms, or any of the other things that you guys know about to get yourself positioned, right? But the hard part emotionally and psychologically for a lot of you is going to be coming to terms with the fact that if you're on a higher time frame, you're going to be experiencing longer terms of sometimes having to wait. Just like here on EU, if we are looking at that three hour chart and we're working with a three hour order flow, yes, there's gonna be periods of nonstop entries, right? So here you have no entry for three days and then you have entry after entry. Then again, no entry for, how long is this? For eight days, right? So you have to wait a week on the first one, I don't know, three days, half a week on the first one to then finally get entries again. You have to wait a whole week on the second on the second drawdown period until you finally get an entry. And then after that, really, you might have not traded this because you might have not liked this price action. You had to wait, you know, until the next actual setup that worked, you would have had to wait 32 days. So a month, right? This is something that a lot of people don't understand. The reason they don't see their SND zones holding or their SND zones being respected is because they expect every single run on liquidity and every single structural play to result in a guaranteed move back into an inefficiency, which is never the case. But when order flow is valid and one structure is valid and moving in a direction and you have your prerequisite set up in validation points and liquidity runs, that when gets mitigated and gives you your setup, that's what's going to create those higher time frame runs on liquidity and stuff like that. Okay. So that is how that works. Um, and that is how it works on the higher time frame, right? And these are just some examples. Let's delete all these examples for a second. Let's go to an eight hour chart, for instance, just to play around with it. This is the, the, the same thing. So I remember this one because I actually took this trade a while back. It happened right here, but same thing, right? You have an impulse, nothing. Okay. Impulse, entry, but I didn't enter this one. I didn't like it. It was during a news event too. So I wasn't even touching it. So there was an entry here, but I missed it. Okay. Impulse, SND, entry. This was an entry I hit and I was able to take to the top side. And guess what? I got out on the first partial around here, the second partial above this high, right? Cause liquidity above any high. So again, most smart money or most mentors are going to just say, yeah, we're targeting this high right here. Um, so just, you know, of course we're going to go up there. So easy. And then it gets there and they go, see, we're geniuses, you know, pay for my course. But again, if, if you're, if you don't have a way to position yourself into that move, you're not really learning shit. It's easy to take any higher low and say, target this right in the future. Guess what? This is going to be a target in the future. Guess what? That's going to be a target. Why? Because, because any swing in, in the market has a, has, um, has sell stops or buy stops above or below it. So of course they're going to be targeted at some point by some form of smart money. But the hard part is teaching someone how to position themselves and think about the market in a way that allows them to get in psychologically, understand themselves, emotionally, understand themselves and do it as well as allow their targets to actually run, right? So check out my previous psychological videos on this channel to understand exactly how you should be thinking in terms of RR and how you should be looking to get involved. So I'm even showing it here, but again, just to get this trade here. And also let's think about it before, before that we had impulse S and D didn't work. Okay. Impulse S and D never touched it. Okay. Impulse S and D never worked. Impulse SND never came to it and then broke structure. So that means that if you were someone that wanted to trade the higher time frames and wanted to operate on the eight hour or higher time frames than that, right? You would have had to wait for your first entry about 27 days until it presented itself to you. Now, again, this same exact price action on a one minute would have taken how long? 27 minutes, you would have waited 27 minutes of potentially some losses and drawdowns or some break evens before you hit an actual buy that only maybe ran to your first partial and then went short that you would have then been able to get into where, you know, again, you have uh, impulse, you have a nice area here, impulse, you have nothing there, impulse, beautiful entry, and now you're off. And this would be the trade that runs right now. Again, for 
cover the time frame. cover this time frame. just forget about it. Like, don't even think we're on time frame. If I showed you this on a one minute, you'd be like, oh, it's bullshit. But now that I'm showing you it on a higher time frame, you're like, oh yeah, I can see how that works. My point is fractality governs this market. The way we trade, the three-step box method or the simple three-step method that I've taught forever on this channel since its inception and that has been now taught in, in some poor ways on the rest of YouTube, but I'm sure a lot of you have started to understand that a lot better over time is this idea of structure or story or bias or liquidity run, right? What liquidity point are you looking for? Two, the SND, the POI, the AOI, whatever whatever people have called it nowadays, but SND, supply and demand zone. Three, the confirmation of that zone, however that's gonna be. These are the three steps you need to create a methodology for yourself to get involved in the market at any time frame, any market, any time, whenever you want, on your own time, on funded challenges, learn it, execute it, join man funding. You know, that that's that's the overall consistency path, right? The setup is easy. The hard part is understanding your own psychology, your own emotions, and then allowing your trades to actually run even after undergoing potentially periods of losses and drawdowns like this would have been right here. Right now, of course, this trade here wasn't my first trade in all this time because inside of this, I was scalping a lot of moves back and forth, right? Because I like to scalp on lower time frames, and my higher time frame setups are those that exist on these on, on Elliott Wave stuff like this, right? So I'm looking at it, it's it's much more different, and it's more long term, and it's it's around stuff like this, right? And again, not all of them work, um, but a lot of them do pretty decently um, and pretty well. So I'm, I'm I'm happy with it, right? And I like to do that lower time frame thing where my periods of drawdown or non-existency is, you know, if it's 21 bars, it's 21 hours. Or in this case, actually from here to here, it's about five hours and then I hit my trade. Or it's less than an hour and then I hit my trade. Or it's two hours and then I hit my trade instead of two days, two months, two weeks, etc. right? That's what you're gonna experience on those higher time frames. So again, we're looking at that eight hour and notice if you were able to consistently sit through this turmoil. So again, something a lot of smart money is gonna do is they're gonna show you like these impulses here because I've seen this happen a few times. They're gonna show you, um, let's exit out of this. They're, what they're gonna do is they're gonna show you this right here, right? And this is actually beautiful. This price action here was phenomenal for any smart money trader that actually knew what they were doing because guess what? They were able to trade this move here, catch it down, right? Three box setup. They're able to trade this move here, boom, three box setup. They're able to trade this move here, boom, three box setup. They're able to trade, um, okay, so nothing, 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 boom. This move here, three box setup, right? So on and so forth. They were able to trade this whole thing all the way down and it was just nonstop, back to back to back, beautiful trades. And a lot of smart money will show you this right here and go, see, look at all that. But what they'll fail to show you and fail to explain to you and the reason a lot of you will be stuck in this mindset of my zones never hold, it never fucking goes, it always runs without me, is because there's also gonna be periods of the shit we talked about right here where there's, you know, maybe that works here, but then there's nothing, nothing, or even failure, nothing, nothing, failure, nothing. Uh, this one might have worked for a little bit with partials, but really you could assume failure. Nothing, failure, entry. This would have been your first entry, but this was during news, so I didn't even take this. So nothing, nothing, entry, right? So again, even though across time frames, as long as you're waiting for your confirmations and you're understanding your entry criteria, you're gonna experience days of not being able to do anything or weeks or in some cases hours if you're a scalper like me. And then you're gonna have a very nice runs that deliver to you the order flow you need because as smart money positions themselves and as you've learned all the things on my channel, they're looking to get in and out of these areas where they bought to sell, where they need to mitigate, where they need to fulfill inefficiency and where they need to continue structural runs on liquidity points while keeping their protected highs in mind and not invalidating them in the mo in the in the in in fr in the form of displacement, which is also taught on this channel. So again, I don't mind if anyone wants to learn from any other smart money um, from any other smart money YouTuber or mentor. I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. I think it's phenomenal that people are getting some of the best education and best ways of trading. However, I also think that it's important that a lot of you understand that there's a lot more to smart money than just higher R and nonstop entries because that's not the case. It's easy to market that and it's easy to show that. And you know, I, I, I dabble in a little bit of that marketing, but I really take a step back when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm trying to explain everything to you guys and telling you guys, you know, if you join me, you're gonna be taught how to think this way and how to emotionally and stably approach market no matter what time frame you're on. Um, and not financial advice, by the way, it's all perspective. But 
a lot of people will fail to tell you this thing right here, right? But you need to get used to prolonged areas of drawdown. And that's gonna, based on the time frame you're on, happen for longer periods of time or shorter periods of time. And the beautiful thing is during this drawdown period right here, or during this period of nothing happening, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have other currencies you're looking at. Because if you're someone that's on a higher time frame, you have more time. Each each candle here is eight hours. So clearly you can look through 20 pairs like this and check if you're inside of any move. And you can confirm that move with you know a one hour or something like that. So you have tons of time to confirm, which means you know during this time here, you might even have four or five or six other setups that you might be able to take while you're losing these or not being able to get in on these because they're running without you on other pairs. Just like I only look at one pair when I'm scalping. Why? Because I have to wait 20 minutes at max before I get into a trade. And during those 20 minutes, I'm already taking trades that are either going break even or losing me money, right? But I know that overall, once I hit my, once I hit my entries, because of the way I, 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 because of my rules and the way I look at RR, I'm going to hit runners that overall net at the net at the end of a month, at the end of the year is going to be positive, right? So I'm okay with doing that, but you need to understand that these trades right here and the ability to let these trades run into your higher time frame areas of interest are what's going to create that profitability even when you go through longer periods of drawdown here. And as long as you're following a smart money mentor or a smart money concept course or whatever it is that you're following, whoever it is you're following, I don't care, I'm happy that you are. Make sure that you have a solid understanding of the fact that setups are not always going to present themselves, right? I, I hate seeing the fact that like, there's some people that come to my mentorship after being in other mentorships and they're like, there's not setups every day. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? I'm like, yeah, there are if you're on the lower time frames. If you don't want to be on lower time frames, I understand. You're not always in front of the computer, but be ready for these drawdown periods. And they go, what? I never thought about it that way. And I'm like, yeah, go and test it a little bit, back test it, watch what happens. And they go, holy shit, you may be profitable, you know, with with basically that sentence. And I and I ran with that sentence. Profitability comes from understanding the market from a standpoint of one, the way we think about the market, two, the conceptual approach we have towards it, three, the way we enter. Four, backtesting that market. Five, viewing it in a journal and doing it consistently. And six, understanding that it's not always going to give you an entry and that prolonged periods of losses or drawdowns or break evens are sometimes the case, which is again a reason that my ment, not mentorship, my ment funding fund is available for an infinite amount of time and there's no time limit on the completion of your funding challenge and it's one step and although it's one to ten leverage someone that understands their rules and can bring down their risk are able to do stuff like this consistently right and then they're able to get funded with large amounts and that is why problems exist they want to give you that opportunity but you need to take the time to understand how to harness that opportunity and actually do something with it right so again this is just a great example of how you know there are going to be great runs on any time frames that you're looking at and those runs are going to create new runs that go beyond what you might have thought, right? Because just like you might have gotten involved here, your first target would have been here. But that doesn't mean that's where you ex exit, right? Because yes, price could come here and then come all the way back up and take out break even or even go long and take out this, this and then go short again, right? But it could also keep going, which it does. And just this move right here can be enough partial. Even this move right here that you might partial on could make up for and give you more profit than any of the losses, drawdowns, or break-evens you took in this area here. And just this one move right here, and it's moved down, and then it's continuous ability to go short without you just trailing your stop aggressively because you understand what? That there are liquidity grabs in the market that happen constantly. And with the understanding, as you're broken even here, you can still look for buys in here, right? Like there was a great buy in here. Many people in the mentorship caught this one right here, right? Impulse, box one, box two, box three. Again, you can go and take a look at this on your own. And again, look at it on anything, and yes, Bitcoin, USD, Ethereum, I trade it myself, it all works the same way. But again, as always, there's gonna be times where it runs without you. And other times where you can get in and then it runs and other people are gonna be looking to get in but it never comes back and just keeps running and keeps running. And that's where the money's made, those runs that happen. You get in or you get in and even though your first target might be here, those runs and those runs on bigger liquidity, on even higher time frame liquidity and even lower time frame demand zones or inefficiencies or inefficiencies and those partials are enough to make up for easily anything in here and on top of that keep you in trades when there's prolonged periods of not being able to get in and what does a prolonged period of not being able to get in mean that means that if you're already positioned which you should be in a trade you can be just running that prolonged period right so it's not that i hate the fact that sometimes there's prolonged periods of not being able to get in because what does that mean that means if you position yourself in a cell up here 
That prolonged period of nothing coming back up to this zone here means that what? This is all excess and free profit out of nothing, out of thin air. So again, be ready to experience to experience points of drawdown and losses and all this stuff, especially utilizing the three box methodology. And if you have a mentor, make sure you've understood that the beautiful things that they always might market are not always the case of how trading actually looks like. And if you're someone that wants to be in a, in a community that, that literally shows you what people do day to day from the funded members with the community and the people just in it, feel free to join the mentorship with the link down below and check out how you can do that. So thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video on higher time frame zones, the same way we use lower time frame zones. And hopefully it gave you a better look into how you can utilize that three box methodology. So thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever you got to do. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video.